Hey photo dudes and dudettes and welcome to Pro Photo Tips. My name is Josh Cripps and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Joshua Cripps Photography. Now when I was recording this video about how to use Photoshop to turn a bunch of back to back to back photos into long exposures, I realized you could use the same technique on time lapse videos to create extreme long exposures or just regular long exposures with really interesting effects. So for example, Here's a time lapse that I shot from Sentinel Dome in Yosemite. And with a little processing, I can turn that time lapse video into an image like this, which is a, a simulated long exposure of a total of 14 minutes shot in the middle of the day. And it's actually composed of 263 individual frames from that time lapse. And since the, the total time lapse ran for about 45 minutes that I was capturing frames, I could have actually extended this from, from a 14 minute simulated long exposure up to a 45 minute simulated long exposure. So incredibly powerful technique to do incredibly long, long exposures in the middle of the day. So how do you do it? Well, first you need the individual frames from your time lapse. So hopefully you have all the source files if not, that's okay. You can use the VLC media player to extract the individual frames from your time lapse, and you can check out this video about how to do that. Now, I should also mention that this technique only works for stationary time lapses. So, if your camera was moving on a rail or rotating or anything else, then this won't work, but if you were sitting on a tripod stock still, then you'll be totally sweet. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna average together all the frames from the time-lapse, which in a sense is exactly what your camera is doing during a long exposure. It's taking a running average of everything that's happening in the frame while the shutter is open. So here's how you do it. First, you come up here to, well, first let me close these. We've got a blank canvas to work with. Okay, so you come up here to File, go down here to Scripts, and click on Load Files, into stack and then browse for the source images of your time lapse and you can see here here is all the source images that I shot during that 45 minute window while I was creating this time lapse now for the image that I just showed you I selected about 250 of these frames covering a span of about 14 minutes but for the video's sake for brevity's sake and for my computer's sake i'm going to choose a smaller subset this time i'm only going to select say about 40 or 50 of the files so go ahead and just shift select all the frames that you want to use and click ok photoshop will load them up in this window and then it'll give you an op a couple of options here uh, if you're shooting on a tripod you don't need to use this attempt to automatically align um, so skip that but what you do want to do is click this create smart object after loading layers and then just click ok so what it'll do is it'll go ahead and bring all the photos into photoshop here and it'll stack them up you can see down here in the lower right hand corner it's stacking up all of those layers all of those photos as individual layers now, this is why I said, you know, you can use as many photos as you want, but it's going to take a while. So in this case, using that smaller subset, it should be done relatively quickly. And then once it's got all the layers loaded up here, uh, all the photos loaded as a layer, it compresses them down into a smart object. Perfect. Okay, so now we need to average together all the layers here in our smart object. And to do that is very, very simple. You go up here to Layer smart objects and then scroll down here to stack mode and select mean and what that does it averages together all of the all of the photos and creates boom our simulated long exposure now since i used a smaller subset of photos only about 40 photos and i think my interval was about three seconds so this is really only um you know about 120 seconds long so this is about a two minute simulated long exposure but there you have it how easy is that and how cool is the result that you can get when you start to bring the individual frames from your time lapses to create these simulated long exposures now you want to make sure if you are doing a really 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 long one like that 14 minute one i did or a 30 minute one that your computer has plenty of ram and lots of free space on the disk where photoshop writes its scratch files its temporary files to otherwise this process will crash and burn you won't be able to save anything and these documents get huge really really quickly my uh 
I believe that the that 263 image file that I already showed you, it's about a 2.3 gigabyte file. Uh, so make sure you've got a lot of power under the hood when you do this. Now, uh, when I was playing with this, I found a couple of best practices that you might find helpful. It's better to use time-lapse videos where the motion is very uniform. So for example, this is a time-lapse I shot in New Zealand, and the clouds kind of billow around a lot, very beautifully, but they don't move in a coherent way, and so the results of that were just really blobby, didn't show a lot of motion. I also recommend don't using too many frames. Um, if you use too many, then the motion can get kind of obscured over time. I found that using frames that cover a time span of 30 to 90 seconds gives you really, really good results. But if you have a situation like this where the cloud movement or whatever is moving is very, very uniform, then longer files or longer time lapses and longer spans of time can work just fine. And you also want to make sure that your frames are close enough together for smooth motion in your time lapse. If your time lapse is a little bit jittery, you're probably going to see that you have gaps or spaces or weird repeating patterns in your simulated long exposure. And that's simply because the individual frames are too far apart and you've got gaps in between the things that are moving. So here's some other fun results that I got when I was playing with this technique. Uh, this is a time lapse that I shot at Lake Tekapo in New Zealand. And when I ran this technique on about 30 seconds of that time lapse, I got this photo. Here's another one from uh, Tasman Lake, also in New Zealand. And when I ran this technique, this is the resulting long exposure that I got. And finally, maybe one of my favorites from, from this process so far, here's one I shot at a place called Gillespie Beach, again, in New Zealand. Um, and I ran that on about 30 seconds of that video. And I pulled the individual frames and ran this technique, and I got this ultimate long exposure, which I think came out just great. So there you have it. It's a super fun technique. I hope you guys really enjoy that. And I'd love to see the results that you get from it. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to join our newsletter for in-depth Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials. And if you haven't seen it, be sure to check out this video, which shows a very similar technique you can use in the field with your camera and multiple exposure mode to create create long exposures without any filters. Until next time, have fun and happy shooting.